since Amashek has already given you an introduction to Lucy and our scientific aid and a few of the things we've done so far, I thought I'd explain a few concrete details about what the data set is, what format it's in, and what things that everyone in this room could start doing with it. Not, so not for me to show up scientific results, but talk about how you can start to make your own. So firstly, a brief bit about why you want to get involved. I mean, the fact that you're here in the first place shows that you must be very enthusiastic about this kind of science already, which is amazing. Then what we want to do, so what is Lucid Analysis, what we're going to do with the data, what we've done already. Then tell you a bit about the, um, the location and format of the data set, the current tools that we use to analyze it, and then go on to do a live demo and um, to get parcel accounts from one frame. So why to get involved? It's an experiment, um, which is really the only one of its kinds. This, these um, time data sets have never been used for a science experiment in this little field of its environment in the past. So it's incredibly new science and very, very exciting results all of the time. Everything that we've seen so far from it has been um, a unique bit of science that no one has ever um, seen before. So just to have that feeling, which is really quite a unique thing, while still at school, is really quite amazing. And it's also an experiment which is completely owned by X. Lucid is, um, it was conceived years ago by students at the school, and it has always been, all of the scientific achievements have been at a school level. So just to continue that legacy and open it up to everyone involved in still at school. So the analysis, as Abhishek explained to you, and as you've seen in Michael's talk, the kind of data you're getting from the scientists is in the form of these frames. It's just pictures, 256 pixels on either side, um, which represent the traces that were left by particles of ionizing radiation across the plane of the detector in a certain amount of time. Um, there's a lot going on in that frame. So as a human observer, you can have a look at this, and you can start to recognize certain patterns. You can say, all of the lines represent particle traits, and what's a different sign, as I'm sure it's explaining to you, represent different kinds of particles. The energies on the color scale represent how much energy was deposited into the chip. And you can get a rough idea of the direction in which they're coming and intersecting with the sector by how long the tracks are and which way they're pointing. But all of that kind of stuff by eye doesn't really tell you very much on a large scale. And if you want to kind of produce a scientific result, which will be taken seriously by the community at large, you need it to be supported by a huge body, a statistically significant body of data. So by analysis, what I mean is teaching a computer or writing a program that can recognize these features that we can look at by eye and then start to replicate them. So we might be able to, say, count the number of electrons in that frame by hand, but there are so many data and so many frames of data, it's a vast, vast data set, that it would literally take forever. So I'm going to now go on to show you what the format of the data looks like. Anyone who's been involved with Pimpix will recognize this web address, timepix.researchingschools.org. And this is going to be, in the coming months, the home for all of the Lucid data. The entire data set isn't on there yet, but um, we've got all the infrastructure in place that's going to be transferred very soon. And details will be appearing on the IRIS website as to exactly how you'll get there, so how you'll get to use any password, because it is all protected. I've got an example zip file here of the format that the data will be in. So we've got two things as we open this up. The first is a spreadsheet in a CSV, just common separating values format. And you'll recognize this from Timpix if you've ever done work on that project before. So what we've got here is every single row represents an individual frame of data. We've got the timestamp, so that's in Unix time. So it's the number of um, seconds which have elapsed since I think the 1st of January 1970. I apologize if that's wrong. Um, but it's just the way that computers keep track of time. And um, then that's even longer team, that's the position relative to the Earth. So if you draw a line down to the Earth's surface, where it will be. And the number of pits and occupancy are just the number of pixels which have recorded any energy above zero in them. So that gives you an idea of how busy the frame is, as it were. And then the occupancy is that number as a percentage of the total number of pixels in, sorry, the, the total number of pixels in the frame, or 256 squared. This kind of data in that format allows you to do some preliminary studies, so to look at where you're getting more radiation. As it were, I use that term in a very loose sense, so you kind of, you record higher values, say, over the poles, over the transatlantic anomaly. But if you want to kind of start doing kind of really proper science, as it were, you want to start looking at the data in a different way. So that's why we have this other thing, the zip file. What we've got is a list of PNG files and TXD files for every frame. So we've got um, a frame and then a number of the frame and then a C. And that just stands for channel. So as I have showed you, Lucid consists of five standard detectors arranged in an open cube, and each one has a number. All of these, this list data file was only running time fix detector number zero, which is the one on the bottom. Um, I just open up one of those things. So that's the frame. 
that we're going to be looking at. So it's quite an interesting one. That was captured over at South Atlantic Harmony. I know because I know where I got the example from. And we've got some interesting things going on. Proton tracks, electron tracks, maybe some kind of heavy ion interaction going on there. So we're just going to look at that in some more detail. And to do that for a computer, we've also got next to it a company in TXT. And that's in a format called XYC. And so if you worked on some of the service school projects before, taking data in pixel mode, where the time it's detected, you'll recognize this format. And so it's just three columns. The one on the left is the X, X coordinate. The one second from the left is the Y coordinate. So just addressing one particular pixel in the frame. And then the last column, the one to the far right, is the number of counts. And that's on a re relative energy scale. It's not in standard units. But if your time detector is calibrated as four out of the five on the R, you can then go through a process to convert that to standard units of how much energy was deposited in that pixel over the shutter time. So I'm just now going to do a very quick demo, and I hope this works, of how you can use a couple of the current tools that we have for Lucid. And I'm going to do a bit of programming. So you'll know what I'm doing if you've done a bit of Python. And I hope that the people in the room, um, well, at least enough of you have done a little bit of Python to understand this. But just to show you that even if it's kind of scary programming as it were, what we're doing is really quite simple. And you just with a tiny bit of coding experience, you can kind of produce some results which are really quite exciting. So everything which I'm going to be doing so far is using a library of software called Lucid Utils. Um, that's available on GitHub. Um, I'm sure when we put things on the RS website, there'll be a link to that as well. And this is the software that's powering things like TapFast, the TapFast platform which you may have used before. It's uh, powering the uh, Python algorithms I've checked to talk about. And so all of the kind of frame counts that we've got from service school so far. So what I'm going to do is from the Lucid Utils library, I'm going to import the function called the <coughs> Reader to read in that XYZ file, and I'm going to read it in. What's it called? Frame zero, C zero dot txt. There we go. So that's just imported, and that's the numpy array. So I'm just going to assign it to a variable called frame. So then what is that? It's just a list of numbers, right? So what we might want to do next is show it as an image. So there's another function in this detail. It's called frame plot. I'm going to import that too. And then frame plot, oh, yeah, this is my profile. It's pink, now I type in got a show frame on that frame which we've got. And that's exactly the same frame as we've got before. So that shows that we've got a frame, and it's in our computer program, so it knows what we're dealing with. So what, so what do we want to do now? We've got a frame that has lots of particle tracks in it, and we want to study each of them individually. So we, what we want to do is split this frame up into individual events. And the kind of silly name that we give to those is blobs, because they're just clusters of particles which are all kind of stuck to each other, like they would be in a blob because they're touching each other, and for that reason we're, we assume that they're part of the same particle track. And so split into, into blobs, we import from the same library a module called blobbing. And then blobbing, dot find on that frame, gives us a very long list of blobs. So that looks like a complete mess of numbers that we can make no sense of that. So I'm just going to give it a name, call it blobs. And then to find something interesting, I'm going to look for a big one. So I'm going to sort them just best, um, so let's sort them by a key um, to find the lambda function um, so the length of the blobs. And we want the biggest one, oh, oops, length of one log, and we want the biggest one first, so it should go one minus that. So that if we just work up the first item of that list, that is the biggest cluster, so the biggest particle track that you see in that frame. So if we just go back, we can open up the PNG at the same time. So I imagine what we're looking at is that one, but just to make sure, that same frame plot program, um, we can show a blob with it too. Oops, blobs to zero. Yeah, so we're definitely dealing with that. So that just shows also that they're all coming out on the same color. So the blobbing algorithm doesn't maintain the energies for each pixel. But that's OK, because all the algorithms so far have just been talking about the shape of the cluster rather than the energies which are supposed in each pixel in order to classify it. So I realize I'm running a bit short on time. So just very quickly, what I'm going to do is show you how then you can use the same library to classify them as either alpha, beta, gamma, proton, or muon, and then generate the counts for each frame. So first, leave a bit of code from the library which you need, lucid details, dot classification, and I'm going to import a lucid algorithm, and just call it, say, Apple. Give it some last name. Oops. Add, uh, as, Apple, there we go. And then just define an array. So in Python, that's just a data structure. It's like a dictionary, so you can look up lots of values and assign them something. So it's like you, you have a set of keys and a set of values for each one, and we're just going to initialize them all to zero. So to start off with, we've got zero. Alpha, that's a string, that's what needs to go in. 
zero of these particles too. So I'm just guessing every kind of particle track it could possibly want to identify it as gamma, also a zero. Proton, this is a bit of a time consuming bit, I apologize for that, and mu one as zero. Oops, forgot to bracket in there, shout at me if I forget some quotes. Um, so that's just initialize the array. And then we just, we've already split this up into the blocks, so we're going to look at each one individually for each individual block in the set of blocks. Then choose the item in that dictionary which is equal to the classification. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to type this line out so I can explain what it means. It's a bit confusing. Um, so the L dot classify block, that will return a string. So either alpha, beta, gamma, proton, or meter, based on what particles I think it is. And then we look that up in the dictionary, find the associated number, so how many we have so far, and then plus equals one, just add one to it. <coughs> we're just going to run that through the shell, type counts once more to see what we've got. In fact, I'll print it, print counts. Oops. So that is the analysis from the algorithm of the number of particle tracks that we've got in that, each, in that frame of alpha, beta, gamma, protons, and muons. So that is exactly the same results that you get from some of that tap So that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes. So I've used up lots of time. I think I'm going to stop about there, but I just hope that's given you some of the details. So remember to check out the IRS website soon. Even though there's a bit of programming involved to going to get things like parcel accounts, it's really simple stuff that you can pick up with just a bit of simple Python programming. Um, so I just want to end off, end up, end up, end up by saying to everyone, this is kind of really, really exciting science. It's completely unique stuff. It's experiment which is owned by all of us. So I just encourage everyone just to have a go at this, even if you've never done it before because the kinds of scientific results you can get back are really, really quite exciting things. Thank you very much.